Oh, my sister hit me pretty hard yesterday. She was very real with me and shared her, her hurt for how I've been, or rather haven't been, very present in her life recently. And I really appreciated how true she was and how she expressed something that was no doubt with her for a very long time. And she shared it with me even though it hurt her and me to, to say, but now that it is on the surface, now that it is out from under the rug, behind the closet, beneath the black sea I can't see. Now that I can feel it, and it is elusively clear, I can move past it. We can move past it. And I realize in this, ex as she was expressing, that my lack of presence being there for her, asking about how she was and really wanting to be a rock in her life, that lack of presence has been a very common theme across all my relationships in life for quite a long time now. Uh, really, ever since the changing for me, I went through a period of my life uh, basically right after college where everything changed in a very radical, unfathomably so way. Um, I began experiencing phenomena that everyone in the society in which I came said to be insane. And when I began sharing what I was going through and how I was feeling, or when I tried to begin sharing, it would come out jumbled, and I truly would sound insane. And the whole time I was going through it, I knew that, you know, there was this, there was this sense of a guiding force. There was a hand I was holding the entire time. But that hand wasn't something that I could consciously speak about at the time. And... So when I did try to speak to people who truly love me, I couldn't share it. I couldn't share anything I was going through in a way that could connect. It was like I was speaking a completely different language. And so I stopped trying. So I pulled away. So I drew myself into an echo chamber where nobody could see me. I retreated from the external world into the internal world of my mind. I locked myself in a room for what felt like an eternity and was continually awestruck, blown away by the universe revealing itself to me in a form so magnificent, a form so crazy, a form of insanity. It was like I had been connected to these doorways within my mind that I could open. And through this doorway was an ocean of imagination, colliding angelic harmonies of the most beautiful images and tones and sound and feelings, sensations, beings, conscious sentient beings that I could communicate with and receive guidance, wisdom, truth truth from and this beauty was colliding with absolute fucking terror terrorization i was receiving and continue to experience such a radical full spectrum of of what it means to be alive so much more than human being burning inside and i was doing it all alone and I was in that echo chamber for quite a few years. 
could arguably say that in a way I'm still there, but it's certainly shifted now. And you know, there was a, a lot of different waves of this experience over the course of a few years as I began learning what it was I was working with. Um, you know, I would, I had, I was fortunate enough to begin this this shifting process. Um, my fall into insanity while I was down in South America and pretty far away from absolutely everyone who had ever known me. And so it was quite easy for me to kind of cut the cords in my life. And um, it hurt me. I did feel incredibly alone for a very long time. It was hard for me to run away, but I just didn't know how to describe the space that I lived. I didn't have any words to say that could articulate the experiences I was moving through. So really, I don't feel like I had another choice. And at the same time, time or soon following that initial cord cutting and it wasn't like a complete blackout but in a in a way it was because there was it was a complete blackout from what was actually going on it was a complete blackout from an expressed truth and if i'm not expressing my truth to another i'm not really in a state where i am receptive of another's truth right it's a all conversation is a two-way path and, you know, it was at a time where people around me were going through shit, just like I was. Um, life isn't easy for any of us. And I know when I cut away, I, I wasn't there for people who really could have used some support. And to all of those who I love that I wasn't there for, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, it was not my intention to leave. I lost a lot of relationships. And I'm sorry I wasn't there for you. So, as I was experiencing all this You could say insanity. I was, I was completely consumed by it, and still very much am. Completely, entirely enveloped in this ocean of, of unfathomability, abstraction, chaos, storm, all the time. And for a long time... I felt like it was impossible for anyone to see me because I lived in such a different space. And soon I came to realize and I continue to amplify the depth of this realization that you don't have to live in the same realms as me. You don't have to see what I see to see who I am. And I know that I am here with a very unique perspective of this reality. And it's not fair for, to myself or for the world for me to expect anyone else to see from my lens. It is my job, my duty to the entirety to bring my lens into a form that can be seen by them. To articulate it in a way through art, through language, through just simple connection and presence that I can be felt by another. And I've been searching for this for a long time now, ever since the changing, for you know, two years now. 
And you know, I had a, an experience looking back at a few of my old videos, standing on top of a roof in LA, angry, so fucking angry and frustrated that I would, I would try to release, I would try to express this point of view, I would try to begin explaining it to you, sharing it with you. Because there's so much beauty in this perception. There's so much beauty in seeing what we are from this point of view. And more than anything, so desperately, I want to share it with you. More than, more than me wanting to be seen, I want to share with you the gift of seeing yourself from this space. And on this rooftop, I was so fucking pissed off that I wasn't able to share this. And I kept trying, I kept trying, I kept trying, and then I just got ticked. And in the midst of these ticks, I would just let go and release into a dance break and just get this frustration out of me. And I'd be in, in that reminiscence, I saw like. I don't need to share this perception. I don't share this perception through explaining it to you. I show it to you in the way I breathe, in the way that I exemplify, I demonstrate myself. I express myself as a human being so much more than human being, all of us. Because what I see in the worlds that I swim is that I'm not special because I can see these places. All of us live here. We are just disconnected from it. And I'm here to be an invitation to it. And we experience it by touching radical form of expression within ourselves. And that I can share with you through abstraction. <coughs> So, I, can choose not to be disconnected from the world around me anymore. I can choose to live each day to share an experience of the expression from here with another. That is the greatest gift I can give to the world. That is the greatest gift I can give to myself. That is the deepest way that I can be present for others in this life. And I'm sorry I haven't been there in the past. I'm sorry I haven't been present to hold you. I'm sorry that I've been so enveloped and so consumed in the worlds of my mind that I haven't been I haven't made the decision to take my breath up, to take a breath from this place so that I can see you and talk to you. I know now that my life is forever going to be a dance. I know that I can lock myself in a room alone for eternity and be continually awestruck by the universe unveiling, unfolding, demonstrating its magnificence all around me. But that doesn't help anyone else for me to be locked in a room alone and experiencing this in the way that I have been. That doesn't serve anyone, and that is, does not serve my purpose. So, I want 
to claim a shift in my reality now, acknowledging that I can take a breath from this magnificent chaos. And in this breath, I can experience stillness and I can come and talk to you and I can connect deeply with you. And we can exchange truth. We can share what is truly going on in our minds in a common language. And the practice of communication and dialogue and presence and holding another and being held by another. This is how the bridge is formed. This is how I connect the I see to the entirety. This is how I build my relationships. This is how I give love to people. By experiencing the bridge, all conversation is a bridge, all conversation is collaboration, all conversation is a dance. So, Let it be had. Be there for people, man. Act upon the feeling. If I see you in a dream, I will connect with you. If I think of you, I will reach out to you and ask how you are. Because I do care. Danielle, thank you for bringing this into my awareness and inviting me back into the reality where people live, <laughs> where we experience family and community and celebration. I realize I've been selfish in my exploration and I'm here to mark a turning of the tides to be true and share it with you. I am here as an explorer pioneering the it space, the dreamscape and it is completely worthless, worthless if I do not share it with you. So, here in the world, I am sharing it with you. Here in the world, I share it with you. I am here for you. I am here for you because I fucking love you more than anything in the world. I love you. I am here for you forever and always. Thank you for inviting me into a new reality in which I feel the presence of others in my life because I give myself to others in my life. Thank you. Thank you. I love you.